How's it going, Banshees and Borgs? We're talking more Destiny 2 today, more specifically, returning raid exotics. For those unaware, in Season 18, players will see another raid from Destiny 1 brought forward into D2. And since Vaults of Glass is already in the game, let's study its raid exotic, the Vex Mythoclast, and take notes of its changes. This will help us anticipate the likely updates the remaining D1 raid exotics will see when they are reintroduced. The Vex Mythoclast is an exotic fusion hybrid, and as everyone just witnessed, it's obtainable the same way it was in D1, and that's by defeating Atheon in the Vault of Glass raid. All its former glory was retained, but it did get a new perk, Temporal Unlimiter. It reads, Defeating Targets Grants Overcharge Stacks. In its alt fire mode, fire linear fusion shots. You can earn 6 overcharge stacks while in play, and these convert into 3 linear fusion shots at max stacks. This added some versatility to the fusion that it didn't have before in D1, making loadouts slightly less dependent on special or heavy ammo. The Mythoclast also received a Catalyst which wasn't available in its previous iteration. Obtaining the Catalyst grants bonus damage, accuracy, and stability with a kill in full auto mode. This buff lasts about 5 seconds before it needs to be refreshed. And overall, compared to its D1 version, the Mythoclast is significantly better in almost every way. The overcharge stacks and linear fusion shots are nice base additions, and the catalyst buff pushes this weapon into territory of being truly worthy of an exotic slot. If all is right in the world, we will see the Crota's End raid make its return in Season 18. This would mean the Necrochasm would be the next exotic updated for the game. Necrochasm is an exotic arc auto rifle that could create cursed thrall explosions. Originally, it could be crafted via a quest line. However, I don't necessarily see this being the case for Destiny 2. It'd be a nice novelty, I suppose, but I'd rather it just be a rare RNG drop for defeating Crota within the raid. A change I do see coming to this exotic is an adjustment to its weapon archetype. In D1, Necrochasm sat at 900 RPM. In D2, 900 RPM autos do not exist, and SMGs have assumed that 900 RPM role. While I don't see Necrochasm being converted to an SMG, I think it's safe to assume that it will be dropped into the rapid fire 720 RPM archetype. This will put it in line with autos like Arctic Haze and Sweet Sorrow. In this gameplay here, I'm using a 720 RPM Chroma Rush with an Arc Dragonfly spec to simulate how the new Necrochasm could feel. 720s in general are low damage and require more shots from a magazine to put down enemies. And back in D1, Necrochasm didn't have a catalyst. So a catalyst incorporating a subsistence-like perk would be ideal for it since it would refill the magazine just for defeating enemies. Now if the exotic itself can drop from the normal version of the raid, then maybe the exotic catalyst should only be obtainable from completing the master version of the raid. This could be the initial justification that players need to clear the master version. If King's Fall is making its way back to us next season, then we should expect the return of Touch of Malice. Touch of Malice is an exotic kinetic scout that can be obtained by finding 50 calcified fragments upon Oryx's dreadnought ship. While this grind was fine in D1, I think the scout will also end up being an RNG drop for defeating Oryx within the raid. Imagine in D2 if Tommy's matchbook and servant leader had a baby, Touch of Malice is what that shit would be. This is an egg before the chicken scenario if you grasp that analogy. It's a weapon truly ahead of its time. The perk Touch of Malice gives the weapon a regenerating round at the end of the magazine that does double damage at the expense of the user's health. In D1, I initially hated this exotic. I couldn't understand why anyone would want to use a weapon that could just outright kill you. At the end of the day, it ended up becoming a PvE powerhouse for damage, especially within the King's Fall raid. This weapon is built for D2 as there are now numerous ways to circumvent the life penalty, from sunspots to wells, if you name it, we have it. In a similar scenario as Necrochasm, the 240 scout archetype for Touch of Malice no longer exists. It'll most likely be put in with the 260 RPM rapid fire frames, as this archetype fires in full auto just as Touch of Malice did. This will put it alongside your servant leaders and your trustees in case any of you out there want to know how it could play in game. As far as an exotic catalyst goes, let's be honest, Touch of Malice doesn't need one. Its perk is unique enough and strong enough on its own that it doesn't warrant added benefits of a catalyst, especially within our current D2 sandbox. 
Now this brings us to our final returning raid exotic, and I'm sure you guys all can guess what it is. Most D2 players have been anticipating a SIVA related season for quite some time now. What better way to reintroduce the Wrath of the Machine raid other than in a season revolving around the Warmind Rasputin? If Wrath of the Machine is the next raid to return, then Outbreak Prime would be the exotic returning to the game. The SIVA Nanite Generating Pulse came from a raid quest obtainable within Wrath of the Machine itself. The reason why this pulse looks so familiar is because it's already in the game. It's now known as Outbreak Perfected. Outbreak made its return in the mission Zero Hour back when the Elixni raided the old tower in search of SIVA. You can literally go buy this at the tower right now and start using it, I think. Seriously, go do it. It bangs in both PvE and PvP. The Parasitism perk causes nanites to attach to a target. The more nanites on a target means the more damage you do. If you slap on the catalyst, then more parasites will spawn from the affected targets and attack nearby threats. And if anybody knows me and what kind of player I am, all of your SIVA are belong to me. With that being said, that leaves Wrath of the Machine as the only D1 raid without a returning exotic. Now that begs the question, will a new exotic be introduced to fill this void, or will all be left as is since Outbreak is already available to us? I personally feel like we don't need a new exotic from the raid, plus it's more work for the devs for no real benefit to the game. So expect there not to be a new exotic dropping from the Wrath of the Machine raid when we see it again. Before I go, if any of you would like to continue supporting this channel directly, head over to the Bioware gear store. They have all the gear from all of your favorite Bioware franchises. If you're a Mass Effect fan like myself, they have everything from collectibles, art, and apparel. Show off your elite status with a new Spectre tee, or decode the mysteries of the next Mass Effect with their new promotional art for the developing game. My discount code for 20% off your next purchase will be in the description below. Now I do hope everyone enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think of my weapon predictions down below. I don't know if any of you guys have anything else you would like to add or change. Maybe you guys have some better suggestions as to what might happen to these weapons. Anyways guys, we're only a few days out now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you at the start of Season 18.